Pat Coleman for D3Sports.com, and I'm here with Bridgeport Tussler, a, a freshman guard for Bethel, as uh, his team defeated St. Olaf on Saturday afternoon by the score of 95-89, uh, a game in which uh, you had a big role to play, but I, I want to talk about how you got to Division Three or back to Division Three in the first place, uh, because you started off at a Division One school, started off playing football, and you played football for Bethel this year, but uh, was part of the part of the reason for coming to Division Three, getting the chance to play both sports? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think right away, like in high school, I was kind of, I was trying to accept, go somewhere with the money and everything, and um, you know, they're giving me a free education, so I kind of took it. Mm -hmm. um, in my head, I might have thought maybe yeah, I could go. I wanted to play the best talent I could. Um, I thought I wanted to improve my skills to the most at the highest level. And um, once I got to that level, I just started thinking, like, you know what? My heart's really not in this. Um, once football ended in December, in January, uh, February, March came around, I wanted to play basketball. That's what my body was telling me. That's what my heart was telling me. Um, after football workouts, I go play basketball. And that's where I really found my enjoyment. And so I decided just to, decided to leave kind of early on. Um, but I told myself, you know, I'm like, put all my work into it during April, during spring ball. And then once that ended, I decided to leave. And I just started looking at the Mayak. You can head out, thanks. I just started looking at the my uh, throughout the Mayak, and because I knew I wanted to come back home and play. Uh, so what what's the Division One football experience like? What do they you know what, work schedule that sort of thing? Um, the Division One experience is uh, I mean you're kind of it sounds bad, but you're owned. You know they're paying for you, so they own you from when the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. Yeah. Um, honestly, like. Overnight is the only time you get freedom, and my freedom consisted of sleeping or studying. <laughs> so yeah. uh, the work, the workouts. I mean, Bethel, Bethel, Coach Myers, our football coach. He's also our strength and conditioning coach. He's tougher than sorry to say it than the coach that I had at South Dakota. Maybe it's because I was in my first year and I didn't experience the rest. But um, people, it doesn't matter if you're the Division One, Division Three. They know their stuff. Um, they all have the same education. They all have the same heart and passion for it. So I mean, the workouts are pretty equal. 23 points uh, this afternoon. A, a game in which uh, you know you guys started off real slowly and then uh, got a bit of a spark maybe about five minutes into the game. Yeah, coach was telling us how we're going to get punched. Um, and I was laughing because when I thought about getting punched, I was just thinking, you know, just, <laughs> just don't even let it happen. Yeah. You know, and we, we took a timeout. We were down 13-4. But to me, it felt like 13, it didn't seem like that. They weren't even up 10 points. So to me, it wasn't even a punch yet. Um, and so we, we knew we just had to come out and play our game. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, when we got when we got going, it's because we were playing team basketball. You know, they don't share the ball as much. You know, Fajini only has six assists going into this game, and that's that's unbelievable to me because I think Zim might be leading in assists besides Bryson. So yeah. I think it's unbelievable how, um, how how great this offense is and how great Novak is. Well, St. Olaf has had a really good season so far, but you guys have had their number. Obviously, you you beat them at their place uh, early on in the season, then you guys came down and finished it off here today. Yeah, they're a tough team, um, and it stinks because it's basketball. The part, the, the thing that stinks about basketball is, you know, we can beat St. Olaf, who's number two, but we could lose to St. John's, who might be number three, mm -hmm. um, or Carlton, who's number four. You know, uh, we just got to come out and play every game. Um, we knew coming in here that they're going to play their best game, and so we just, I don't know, it kind of gave us a little chip on our shoulder. Um, we wanted to make sure that we made a statement that this wasn't a fluke, the first game at our place, that we can come into this house and win as well. So uh, what's the you know what's the basketball experience like at uh, at Bethel or in Division three for you? Um, it's it's phenomenal. Um, I think right right away I was thinking don't I didn't want to be classified as the football player who's playing basketball. Well, want, and you're not the only football player who's playing basketball here. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. And I just didn't want to seem like you know I'm football and then I can play basketball too. It's I want to come in here and during the basketball season I want to be a basketball player. You know once basketball is over then I'll start working on football and so on. Um, so I wanted to hit this head on and I think for a while I was struggling a little bit like not even confidence but just thinking body wise and um, really think, seeing football guys getting bigger and bigger and I'm starting to think do I want to do that and no I came here to play basketball too um, the experience is unbelievable Novak's a great teacher great mentor um, he's different than coach Johnson the football coach but it's, it's nice because I have coach Johnson who's like my best friend uh, like a father um, he's honestly like my biggest mentor but then you have Novak who's my trainer he teaches me about the game um, he's he's a real he's a real coach and uh, he's teaching me more he's coaching me in life as well well, and for a guy who was Mr. Football here in the state of Minnesota to come and say, you don't want to be known as the football player, that, that says a lot. Yeah, I, I just think, you know, wherever your heart is going, you know, that's what you should do. And I really think for partial, partially I wanted to go to Division One because I wanted to be titled as a Division One athlete. And to me, once once I was out there, to me, I could look myself in, in the mirror and say, like, I don't I don't think Division One is for everybody. You know, I think I can still improve my game. I think I can still improve and become a better man, whether I'm at a Division One level or Division Three level. Um, competition, I mean, it's to me, it's it's this that's the game of basketball and football. And so coming down here, I learned a lot, um, realizing, and and I'm not I'm not owned. You know, I'm still. 
I'm not ready for the real world, and I feel like Bethel's giving me the best chance to experience and teach me and mentor me until I get to the real world. I got to ask about Bethel football because obviously it wasn't the greatest season for you guys this year, uh, and you probably got an earlier start on basketball than you really wanted. But uh, you know, as much as a, a program doesn't own you, you have a really tough schedule. I mean, you start from you know uh, training camp in August and you go all the way through into March. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, th yeah. With f man, the football coach he's unbelievable. And granted, like they don't own you. Yeah, we still have lifting, we still have practice and everything. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm paying for school, you know, things like that happen. Um, but it's not a bad thing, you know. I think for a while, like I said, you know, I was chasing the money and chasing everything. Um, but coming to Bethel with the football coach, he's unbelievable. He took me under his arm. I honestly feel like I'm his son. Um, I, I actually feel like I grew up in his house. Um, there's just, from the moment I met him, he looked me in my eyes and said he loves me. And he, I mean, he, and there's tears in his eyes already. There's a passion there. Um, granted, it wasn't, it wasn't a great year for us, you know. And it, it hurts to think about it. I know coach and I still talk about it. I still miss it, actually, you know, but it's basketball season. So um, once football season comes back around in August, actually, when basketball's over in March, it's football season. But once, once the pads come back on, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hit it hard again. All right, let me ask you, because, uh, you know, you talked about how the fact that, you know, you guys could, uh, you know, you've been a little inconsistent so far this season, right? You've, you've beaten some of the top dogs. You've lost some games you probably shouldn't have. What does Bethel have to do on the, on the court the last few weeks of the season here to be more consistent? Um, we just need to come out with that intensity. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, we're going to get punched every game. We're going to get, you know, there's somebody, some, it's a game of runs. We're going to get hit. Um, I honestly think we just need to come out here. It doesn't matter if we're playing McAllister, Hamlin, a team, a team that might not even ever win a game. Um, we need to come out here and beat them, make a statement every single game. Um, and I don't know if personally I haven't even done that. I know the games we've lost, I could look myself inside and give it my all. And I, I think it goes for some of us, you know. Um, I don't know for sure it's on me, on part of that. Um, if you watch film on me, you can tell I have way more passion out here in this game, in the St. Thomas game, than I do for the Carlton game. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't do that. And that's, I think that's a freshman thing. I think also by the end of this time I could learn from it. Um, I can learn from it right now. And I hope at the end of the season people don't see me as a freshman anymore. It's Bridgeport Tussler. He is a freshman, at least uh, on the roster, here for the Bethel Royals as they defeated St. Olaf by the score of 95-89.